no welcome, and no intro. I'm only going to show you how to navigate a modified arcade 1UP Simpsons cab that has the mystery Dawson 4 player control fix by Team Encoder installed, with supporting software from Retroarch, the front end dig, a great home app called Nova Launcher, and Button Mapper, a lightweight, reliable app that will always get us back to our home app. This demo does assume that you've done the mystery Dawson 4 player control fix, and it is assuming that you've installed the Team Encoder pre-configured Retroarch install and the front end dig. As shown in my past video, you should see links above for both of those videos, and I'll try to link to them in the description as well. This video is for educational purposes only and is only intended to show you what I've done and what my results are. If you choose to modify your systems using this or any other information I've provided from any videos or content I've created, you do so at your own risk. I, this channel, or any person connected to this video will not be held liable for any choices you make with your hardware or software. Modify at your own risk. Before anyone says anything, I am aware that the protective film is still on the cab. My mod isn't finished, and I'm not ready to remove it. The goal of this mod is to have an arcade cabinet that not only has a great number of two-button arcade games, but I also want to have as many two-button consoles as possible. I'd like to be able to power the cab up, select a game, play the selected game, exit the game, navigate all the menus, and power down the cab. All without a keyboard, that way, the cabinet looks and feels like a standalone unit. This mod is controlled with any of the player's sticks. Moving the stick in any direction lets you navigate to a new selection, attack moves you forward in a selection, and jump pulls you back out. The unit can be told to start the front end dig on boot or simply wait in the home app, in this case Nova, giving you the option to start any of the programs you have set up in your home app. I personally have been playing with both, and I'm unsure which booting option I like best. I'll be booting into Nova, as I've tested it a ton and know it works well. Let's get started by pressing the attack button on our control deck when I have the app dig selected, and this will launch our front end dig for us. When using dig or Nova, we're able to use any of the controls from any of the four players to control, make selections, and execute games or apps. Dig isn't bad as far as front ends go, but it does seem to have some limitations. It worked well for a small number of systems, but when I started adding a copious amount of consoles, I did have to move all the storage for themes and box art over to the external SD card. However, this was expected as we are limited to the four onboard gigs of storage that come natively on the Simpsons CAD. I also want to point out that the scraping capabilities of DIG seem lightweight or basic. It would be very nice to see some screen scraper integration added. And to be clear to those of you who do not emulate, what we are doing here is using DIG to manage all of our game ROMs in an easy to find and select way. DIG then hands that selected game ROM to Retroarch, which in turn manages all of our emulator core. Retroarch will then take the ROM and launch it with the correct emulator core, and we are then able to play our old school retro game. Of course, the in-game controls will not navigate DIG or Nova when in-game. First, we'd need to exit the game and we do this by pressing both the live key and the red player one start key. After exiting a game, you're given the option to rate the game, share your rating, and share your score anonymously with the community. You can, of course, opt out of those options and simply continue to the next game. But what's the fun in that? Again, with our joystick, we'll pick a game ROM, this time bad dudes, and press the attack button to launch the game. Once the game is launched, Retroarch will take over by loading the game's corresponding emulator core, followed by the game. You're now free to play your game as designed, and the home app and front-end controls will remain dormant as long as you're using Retroarch. This control functionality will remain until you press the assigned set of exit keys. In our case, I've set them to have both the start and the select buttons pressed at the same time. On this cab, that's going to be the red player 1 start button, set as the start button, and the white live button, set as the player 1 select button. After exiting the game, simply press the jump key to back out into whichever menu you wish to make a selection from, and continue to use dig as before, using any joystick to navigate left, right, up, or down, the attack button to select an option, and the jump button to back out of an option. Let's back out of the arcade section, and this time, let's pick a console game, and let's do something fun that many of us didn't get to try out as kids. I'm going to pick the Sega CD, as I'm guessing many of the YouTube viewers at home have probably not gotten to play the Sega console add-on. At least not that much. When I was growing up, 
very few people had the extra income to buy this add-on. With that said, let's see if we can find a game that will work with our controller layout. The classic game Sonic should work for our needs, and to select it, I'll press the attack button to enter the game selection, and then I'll press the attack button again to launch the game. After the game is launched, RetroArch will take over, again loading the emulator core and then loading the game for gameplay. The game plays like a dream, and I wanted to pick this game as I'm sure many of us have played some form of Sonic the Hedgehog at some point in time. As you can see after setup, everything works and plays very well. You can exit games back into your front end without issues, and select your next game with ease. Again, let's try another console that many of us have not gotten to play. This time, let us try the TurboGrafx-16, also known as the PC Engine. Also, I don't remember this being the version of Adventure Island that I recall from my childhood. I may need to recheck my ROM sets. Or maybe this is right, and I just don't know everything. Regardless, the game's image is very clear, and it sounds wonderful. Again, to exit the game, we'll press both the Player 1 Start button and the Live button at the same time. Let's try one more game. This time I'm going to pick a console called the PC Engine CD. I also feel that this is a great console that most of us have not had much exposure to. I'm going to try and save the audio for you to hear, as it seems to be of very high quality for its time. If I pull the audio, it will be because of copyright issues. If the audio is still there, please know that I have really crappy cameras, and the audio you do hear is being played over the stock Simpson speakers and recorded with a phone's microphone. A Note 9 from Samsung, in fact. Why couldn't you be more like your brother? Have you ever expect to make a living slaving over those extravagant weirdos, the Adams family? Hey, what about my gold? Oh, what's the use? Here I am again, just like clockwork. Too bad we couldn't do this once a year. I mean, why should I have to demean myself each and every time I set foot on this property? Tully, my boy, you seem a bit stressed these days. I hate to think my humble family is the cause for your duress, but I have an idea which I think you might like. If you're able to successfully find the family vault, you may take as much money as you wish. There is one catch. The family and I shall all be at home waiting patiently to, well, let's just say to, make your task a bit more difficult than one might have originally imagined. Hmm. I mean, how hard could it be to find that silly vault anyway? And what could they possibly do to me that they haven't tried before? By George, I mean, by Gomez, I'll do it. Tully, my good man, how about playing a round of golf? Uh, sorry, Gomez. I do have one more thing, console-wise, that I'd like to show you. This is something that I don't think is very common for most people to see. In fact, it's not really legal, but at the same time, I'm not sure it's illegal. I'm, of course, speaking of the Dendi. The Dendi is a console from the Cold War. Basically, a communist clone you would have found in Russia or China that was derived from the NES. The Dendi was not only a cloned Nintendo, but most of the games were clones of popular games or outright hacks. I'm guessing most of us didn't know old Mario could speak Russian. So let's say you want to exit all these add-ons and simply play the game that comes on the arcade cabinet. Is that even still an option? Well, of course it is. All we must do is exit the game. Once we've exited and are in the Dig app, we'll need to press the jump key from any player controls until we get a message asking if we'd like to exit Dig. Just navigate to the Yes selection and hit Attack. You should now be in Nova Launcher, our home app. From here, we just navigate to the Simpsons icon and press Attack to launch our stock arcade software.
As you should be able to see, not only are we still able to play the arcade software that comes with the arcade cabinet stock, but the easter eggs are all working as well, and you should be able to use these easter eggs in both the Simpsons games. To tell the truth, I love to bowl with Grandpa Simpson. He has some really good stats for such an old dude. I just hope he doesn't break a hip. I've got to ask the question, how many of you know about these easter eggs? I'm guessing there may be a number of you who own the cab but have no idea of these other hidden features. Let me know in the comments if you had prior knowledge of these in-game treats. I'd like to thank all of you for checking out this video. I do hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, or even if you didn't, please remember to like, leave me a comment, share this video with a friend or on your social media, and remember to hit that notification bell. These are all small clicks of your mouse, but to this little channel, those small actions mean the world. Thank you.